third passage in this particular mock was all about uh, uh, manners. It started with uh, a, a quote about this book called A Short History of Rudeness, which um, uh, uh, talks about manners in an American style. And then uh, it talks about this person called Mark Matthews and uh, his comments on manners. But then um, it doesn't uh, entirely delve into that particular book or into uh, what Mr. Mark Matthews says. The passage then goes on to uh, into a comparison basically as Matthews makes about these two sources which talked about uh, manners earlier. One is a weekly called uh, Town Topics by a Colonel William Mann and the other one is uh, by Emily Post, a book, famous book called Etiquette, right? And then it regards uh, these uh, two and says what are the uh, same uh, comparisons that they make and uh, what are the differences in uh, opinion that these two sources have. Then further then it goes into, a, it delves, the passage delves into manners and morals, how these are very closely connected and then how manners and morals are further connected to politics and uh, uh, society, how uh, uh, there is this uh, particular prejudice that links uh, or that comes into picture, uh, the linkage between manners and class whether you have manners and uh, 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 are you somebody who is, let's say, uh, of a certain class distinction, right? That's what it says. And finally, then it goes into discussing relationship of manners uh, in the workplace, right? So let's get on with the first question here. It reads, according to the passage, which of the following statements does the author agree to with respects to human relations? Now, before I point out to the answer here, let me take you back to that part in the passage where it talks about relations and uh, manners. It's right here. I could uh, mark this for you. And it says, uh, manners are trivial, profound and uh, amorphous before uh, beyond com compassing. Then it says manners, and this is where it needs to be highlighted. The passage needs to be highlighted. Manners are what is left when serious issues of human relations are removed from consideration. So what can be is, you can have manners and you can uh, you can have manners and you can remove uh, human relations right you can remove relations but then yet without manners serious human relations are impossible so you cannot have you know the other way around which is you cannot have uh, man uh, relations but no manners right this cannot exist this particular thing cannot exist but this can so uh, this having been established let, let's go back to the um, options right here. A says manners can exist without serious human relations but not vice versa. That straight away is our answer here. But anyway, we could do with reading the other options as well. Serious human relations can exist without manners but not vice versa. We know this is not the answer. Manners and serious human relations go hand in hand. No, they uh, do not, right? Uh, as is presented here in the passage. Manners cannot exist in the absence of serious human relations. They can, but serious human relations, relationships or relations cannot exist without manners. So we have option A as the answer to this question. This question here says, the reason that manners are not subject to comfortable rigidities and fiats is that. Now, before we uh, go on to discuss the options given here, Let's go back to that part of the paragraph which talks about uh, uh, this particular uh, question. It's right here. See, let's read from here. It says, uh, if manners were only about, I can mark this uh, particular part for you. It says, if manners were not only about when not to mention how to use fish knives or whether to walk on the street side of your female companion, I am uh, sure you uh, guys do that. Perhaps they would be simple and subject to comfortable rigidities and fiats and then it goes on to say but manners are also about morals and ethics and mobility both physical and social and class and the workplace and a great many other subjects that introduce ambiguity so there's a lot of ambiguity involved and a lot of uncertainty rather than clarity into the equation right so since there's a lot of ambiguity, uncertainty about so many things, for instance, that manners are all about morals and ethics and uh, mobility and class and workplace. This is why they are not, uh, as it says here, subject to rigidities and fiats, right? 
so let's go back to the passage uh, to the question here this is where the question is it says why are they not subject to it is it because eating habits and companionship are not very complex no that is not the reason we just read is it because etiquette can be grammaticized but not morality no that's not what the passage mentions manners are linked to ethics the latter being averse to convenient compartmentalization uh, there is no talk of ethics being com compartmentalized right so we can um, uh, safely eliminate that option d is the answer that they encompass many spheres of our daily life which cannot be standardized right uh, for instance if you talk about manners in the workplace you can have no one standard which would say okay doing this is uh, uh, let's say manners and doing this is not mannerful but and that is exactly the answer that uh, is the answer what makes option d the answer for this particular question let's read this question here it says which of the following pair of terms have been interchangeably used in the course of the passage right now obviously for such a question you would have to find all those areas where these words have been used and then go on to see whether they have been interchangeably used or not um, uh, for such a question I would rather suggest uh, if, if it comes in the actual uh, question paper it's a good thing uh, that you should unless you let's say you have read the passage very carefully and you might remember the areas where certain uh, words have been uh, spread it's a good it, it'll be a good option to probably leave out such a question but then we have to solve it we have to analyze this question so let's uh, get on with it the answer to this question has to be uh, C high and mighty and uh, guided class I'll take you uh, to that part uh, shortly but then A says uh, good conduct and morality it can be ruled out because in the passage the author talks about uh, the difference between good conduct and morality so we can say that they have not been interchangeably used uh, for B which is uh, uh, social polish and wise if you were to read about uh, Colonel Mann which is right here uh, I can take you through that uh, particular part right um, right here see it says here he despised and this talks of Mann he despised the perverse misuse of social polish as a cover for vice right so you can't use manners as a cover for vice so this implies that social polish I'm sorry polish and vice cannot go uh, together they cannot be used interchangeably then what about uh, C high and mighty and guided class which is the answer here uh, see it says here right there in that part again of the passage that we just marked it says here uh, manners he thought ought to reflect morals and reinforce them not cover up for their uh, absence and right here if I can mark it for you it says blackmailer and extortionist he may have been but a genuine moral indignation fueled Marx's attack on the hypocrisy of the guilded class that he had stealthily invaded right and then it says that he belonged uh, to that particular class himself he belonged to the you know socially uh, a high and mighty class so that is why we can say that both of these have been used uh, interchangeably what about uh, option D it's not uh, these two which have been taken together social polish and guided class we just read uh, it's actually high and mighty and guided class which have been put together used interchangeably and that is the answer to this particular question then so then what is the main objective of the author of the book a short history of rudeness what does he want to show uh, let's go back to that part of the passage which talks about uh, this book um, there was a very short part here it says a short history of rudeness is a thoughtful and witty book an examination of manners this is where I'm reading it draws on an impressive variety of sources and uh, that is where it talks about this uh, particular uh, book right and then it uh, uh, connects manners to morality right uh, for instance see this is where the passage states what is moral to one person or group may be immoral to another person or group and all parties to the disagreement may have legitimate persuasive reasons right so what he's basically saying what the sub uh, the passage basically talks about the book in a way is that uh, it says that uh, the definition of morality varies uh, and so does the definition of manners right when you think that morality 
is uh, goes from let's say A to B so does uh, the definition of man is also uh, option B here on the other hand so we have uh, therefore the answer to this question as option A the inevitable uh, linkage um, between manners and ethics right this is what has been mentioned in the uh, uh, by, by the author of the book the nature of morality itself no this is not what the passage talks about the crudeness attending on the day to day life of modern americans again something which is not the theme of the book the morality of class differentiations is only one point in the entire passage and so we have option a as the answer here